also um, link it to on our social media pages. So if anyone, parents, if you know of someone who wants the information but just can't be here tonight, they will be able to find that information going forward. Um, as always, I'm Principal Jackson. This is our Wednesday parent meeting uh, with everything that's going on. Um, you, I, I'm sure a lot of you all are aware and you're on this call tonight because we are planning the phase in back to school. Um, so we're going to try it again. I know we tried first semester and COVID just would not allow it. Um, so it's looking like the numbers are actually dwindling in the city and really across the country. So that's a good thing. That's really actually it's a great thing. So that idea of getting back to normal, as they say, I think we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's definitely been a long ride. I was just reflecting recently that we've been really dealing with this since March. So, you know, coming up on that, uh, we're a couple few weeks away from the anniversary of the start of all of this. So, um, you know, looking forward to getting back to some semblance of normalcy um, in our personal lives and definitely for our children as far as school goes and being able to offer that face-to-face -face opportunity to them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> share my screen and we'll get started with the presentation. Can everybody see that? I can see it. Looks good. OK. So again tonight, um, the, the focal point of our meeting, our agenda is just going to be talking about the return to face to face learning. Um, so what we need to look at first is the actual return date. So for fifth grade, fifth grade students will have their phase in on the 18th, Thursday, February the 18th, um, the day before, which already aligns with our schedule. So this is more so for if you have kids at other schools, um, the day before the phase in, which will be the 17th, will be an asynchronous day for students. Um, so on the 18th, fifth grade students return, and then on the 28th, grade six through eighth will be returning. Um, and the same thing mirrors are on the high school side. So on the 18th, ninth grade students return, and then on the 28th, grades 10 through 12 will return. Now, there has been a lot of talk, speculation, um, whatever the case may be, about why the return is happening now. You may have seen a lot of things in the news with the governor and some of his requests and almost kind of I don't want to use the word threats, but you know, just saying if this, then that with regards to uh, MNPS returning. None of that has to do with our returning. Um, MNPS has followed a COVID tracker uh, for the majority of our journey this year, um, and that tracker can be found on the MNPS.org website. Basically, the threshold number for us to be in a blended situation is seven on a scale of one to 10 on that tracker. As that tracker goes and it combines transmission rate and just a lot of different things, um, we are in the fives. Last I checked, we were in the low fives, like 5.2 or 5.3, something like that. So we are kind of well below that seven and above that we had been operating in, which was preventing us from offering the blended opportunity. Um, so that is why the change is coming at this point. With that being said, if things with COVID and the numbers taking an unfortunate turn for the worse for some reason, and the numbers increase and the tracker um, aligns with that and we get back above seven, then more than likely we'll be looking at a stoppage of the phase in and going back to the virtual setting that we've been operating in in the past several months. So just to give you all just I just want to share that with you so you have an understanding about how the decision making works when it comes to all of this. Specifically for us at East, our bail schedule will be remaining the same, so we're going to be operating from the 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. schedule. 
Um, the doors to the school will be opening at 745 each morning. Um, breakfast will be served each day. It's going to be in a grab and go format. Um, so basically kids who want breakfast in the morning, when we open the doors at 745, they come on in, they'll grab their breakfast from the cafeteria. They'll be able to eat their breakfast and, you know, get into class. We are cutting breakfast off at eight o'clock. So if you show up late to school, if you show up past 8 a.m., please understand that school breakfast will not be available. And that is 100% based upon us wanting to make sure that everyone is where they're supposed to be conducting themselves in a way that they're supposed to. And we can't have just things hanging out there loose like that. So. If you show up after eight, it is 100% a report to the office to get signed in and then a get right on to class type of situation. So breakfast will not be offered after, offered after that. At this point, we do not have before or after care on campus. So I know in the past we've offered the NASA program and a few other things. Currently, right now, we do not have those things available to us after school. Um, as we get more information and things develop further, hopefully the numbers will continue to decline and we'll be able to make a shift to offering some more of those opportunities after school. But as of right now, we do not provide aftercare, aftercare programs after school. Um, the expectation with that being said is that when dismissal occurs at three o'clock, the building is to be clear at three o'clock unless a student is with um an adult a staff member in the building i can't really foresee at this point a lot of that happening that seems like that would be a rare occurrence so the expectation is simply that the building is clear after dismissal um for those of you who are new to our school community um your student as you may know we don't have school buses because we are a magnet school um and we pull from all over the city. So with that being said, your student, your child's student ID does actually serve as a bus pass. Our students are able to ride the city bus using their um, school ID. So if your kid hasn't picked up their ID yet or when they do get their ID, if they come on campus or if you're on this call and you're not sending your kid to school, um, and they don't have their ID, they're still able to ride that city bus if you, you know, if you would like them to. So definitely get up to the school and get your ID. Um, some specific things. Um, students will be in SSA when they return. So they have to have a solid colored shirt, collared, uh, they need to have khaki pants or shirts or skirt that can be gray, black, blue, khaki. Masks are going to be required for everyone at all times and less designated. And I'll speak more about that. Um, but when we're in the classroom, we're in the hallway. When we walk on campus into the building, the expectation for everyone, adult and child included, is that you do have your mask on. There are no exceptions. This is not going to be a conversation. We're not going to be inclined to give pep talks about this. This is for the safety of everyone involved. So that and that's just the expectation. Um, I cannot stress that enough. There is a zero tolerance when it comes to wearing a mask and also following the procedures and protocols that we have in place to make sure that everyone is as safe as possible. COVID has not gone anywhere, even though we're opening the school doors. So we need to make sure when we're in the building, we're conducting ourselves appropriately. I understand kids are kids, children are children, and we all have, you know, we want to make sure kids are having a good time and enjoying themselves. But this is a very unique situation that we all find ourselves in. And so there really is not a lot of space for anything that we would consider to be a disciplinary concern. Uh, as far as hallway transitions go, our expectation, as is our protocol for making sure we can maintain a safe, healthy, and orderly environment, 
is that our students will be walking in a line. They will have designated line positions. Um, they will be distanced within those lines in the hallways an appropriate um, amount of feet apart to, just to make sure that we don't have that close proximity contact and all of that. Um, and they will be quiet in the hallway. Um, being able to hear directions and follow them the first time is essential if we want to make sure that we can ensure everyone is safe, healthy, and also comfortable with being in the building. So once again, I want to, I just, I need to, I can't say it enough. We have a clearly outlined plan and we will have an orientation for first, fifth grade when they come onto campus. Um, that orientation information will be sent home. Um, it will be on the call out in the email. You will receive that information in multiple forms, so you can go back over that information with your student. Um, but there's not a lot of leeway for not following our safety measures and protocols that we have in place. To go along with ensuring the classroom is safe, windows and doors in the classrooms will be open to allow for air circulation, just to kind of keep the air fresh and clean. So students will need to dress accordingly. They will not be using lockers when they return, so they need to dress accordingly for those possible conditions. Um, all the windows open in a way so that even if it's raining, the rain won't be blowing into the room or anything like that. So um, they actually open down on an angle. So we don't have to worry about weather blowing in, but we want to make sure we have that circulation in the classroom. Um, so kids will need to, you know, if you get a little chilly, bring a sweater, you know, a coat. Make sure you probably have layers as, as instead of like a huge big coat um, that may be uncomfortable to sit in um, for extended periods of time. Um, but that's that's really this is all in the space of making sure that <clears throat> we're doing everything that we can on our side to create a health and safety environment for our teachers and for our kids. Um, there is also the expectation that every student brings their laptop every day. Every student brings your laptop every day charged up. Um, now in the classrooms, we will have each, each classroom will have um, will have a laptop cart to charge laptops halfway through the day. We understand that as kids use their laptops, the batteries will run out, so we're not expecting laptop batteries to last all day long. Um, so we will have laptop carts available and we do have times budgeted in during the day where they can put those into the charging station. But the expectation is that they bring their laptop every day. Even though we're transitioning face to face, we're not going to 100 percent get back to the approach that school was before all of this started, meaning we're not going to be operating on the whole uh, multiple handouts with paper and all of that kind of thing. They're still going to be submitting their assignments through Schoology, even though they're in the building. So they're going to have to have their laptop in order to complete their work, submit their assignments and receive feedback. Also in every classroom will be hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes and spray. We have extra masks. Um, our desk, we have the benefit. Our, our school is actually in a great position to where we can actually have students sitting in classrooms six feet apart. So um, that's what you will find when you enter the room. So I know there were some concerns from parents asking about um, what are some of the measures that we have in place? Do we need to send things with our kids as far as sanitizer and all of that? I mean, feel free to send whatever you like, but I want to assure you that we probably have enough hand sanitizer to last this year, next year, and going into the year after that. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that. Communication is the key for this being successful. Um, at this time, only students and staff are allowed in the buildings. So what does that specifically mean for us as parents? If we arrive late or we have to pick up early, you need to call the school. Um, we will get your child to come down to the office. You will have to ring the bell on the front door. You will communicate with 
probably Miss Rogers, our secretary, um, and we, you know, we'll walk your child to the front door. So we're not allowing for lunch deliveries. We're not allowing, we can't, we're not even doing school tours in the building right now. Um, so if you need to communicate, if you want to see your child, if you want whatever the case may be, um, give us a call, let us know, and let's come up with a plan so we can work that out. But parents, any of that, we can't have anyone in the building right now. As far as late pickup goes, again, the idea is that at this point, we don't have after school activities, tutoring or anything like that in the building going on right now. So the expectation is that the building is cleared by three o'clock. That also means that we can't have kids hanging out after school waiting for a ride um, like two or three hours after school. I am not going to allow children to sit in front of the building in middle school unsupervised after school for long periods of time. What that means is I have to assign an adult to be there. What that means is we're now increasing the possibility if one of them is asymptomatic, have COVID and asymptomatic and they don't know it, we're increasing the possibility of people getting sick because they are now having extended contact with each other. So it's vital when three o'clock gets out, please have a plan in place for your child to be picked up in a very timely matter after school. We cannot have students on campus waiting for a ride at four and five o'clock in the evening. We, that's just not possible. Um, I will speak on the front end of that the same way I will speak to disciplinary concerns, um, mask concerns, not following our COVID protocol concerns in the building in regards to transitions from one class to another or appropriate behavior in a classroom. We're in a non-negotiable space. So if those type of things become pervasive, if those type of things become extreme, if it becomes more than a one time type of situation, then we will have to have a conversation about the appropriateness of the face to face space because it's about more than discipline. It's about everyone being safe. So if we're not doing a mask, if we're not following the rules, if we're not following the protocols, if we're not following the safety procedures, if we're not getting picked up on time, then that takes away from the focus of learning which is why the doors are opening to begin with and everyone being safe while learning and teaching is going on and it puts it on that individual that's unfair and that makes it unsafe so we i can't allow that um and that's for you know our adults in our school community as well our teachers our faculty and staff you have to wear a mask as an employee there is it's a non-negotiable for everyone we have to follow the procedures to make sure that we're safe. Uh, parents, you will be getting an information sheet sent home to you uh, for face to face in order for your child to attend. I will need that information sheet back from you with updated information, contact, telephone numbers, all of that. Um, reason being, as you know, kids can carry COVID. If a kid shows up and throughout the day they just don't feel well, they start feeling a little shaky and going down. It's just like, oh, we need to get in contact with you. We're not in a place where we can afford for numbers to not work. So we so on that form, I really need you to update that in a way that reflects a number to a telephone or something that you that is readily available to you. OK. Um, we, we have to have those numbers. We have to have that contact information, um, email, all of that. Um, so that's a non negotiable for us. If your child is going to attend face to face, it is mandatory that you have an updated contact sheet information on file with us. Um, also, parents of seventh grade students, um, if you have not completed your shot record immunization and turned that into the office, and your child is attending face to face in order for them to enter the building they need to have their shots taken care of so i think um, going back 
seventh and seventh grade comes back on the 28th. So if you have don't have your shots in, you got about a couple weeks or so to get that taken care of. Um, if you do not, your child will not be allowed to enter the building because we we have to have that. That's state law. We have to have that on record. Um, some other things that will be occurring, students will be allowed. We will be hosting recess. Um, we right now have that planned um, where they will be able to get outside. They'll be able to take their masks off. We have some activities and things planned for them where they will be, be able to engage in physical activity in a very safe way, still socially distanced, but still get them out there to get some exercise, get some fresh air, get that appropriate mask break and all of that. Um, we will be serving a box lunch every day, not a sack lunch. So the cafeteria staff will be preparing lunch for students. Um, we're not doing the microwave in the cafeteria at this point. So for some of our families, if you can recall last year, we had the microwaves in the cafeteria. We're not doing the microwaves. So please do not send food with your student. If you don't want them eating school lunch, they just don't want to have that. Please don't send food with them that needs to be warmed up. So the ramen noodles and all of that, don't send it because they will not have a place to cook that and warm that up at. Um, and that of course is just because we want to make sure it's just the idea of the cross contamination. Uh, we don't want there to be anything present on a microwave where if a kid is asymptomatic or whatever and they touch the microwave, then another kid comes behind them and uses it. And if it wasn't wiped down appropriately, now we have a, we have a problem. So we're just going to put a pause on that until we get a little bit, you know, until we get a little more out of the weeds when it comes to COVID and all of that. Um, let me see if there's anything else that I am forgetting. Um, I think that's it as far as the formal part of things that I want you to know up front. Um, and I will open it up for any questions that you may have. Um, of course, we do have our um, school website, East Nashville Magnet Middle School .com, where you can always find up to date information about the school, the Schoology Enrichment Hub. If you have not, please do. Even if your kid is coming face to face, please make sure you're signed up for your parent account um, and then other ways for you to get in contact with us. And we'll open the floor up for any questions. Uh, Ms. Carr says, Kaya Carr, will we be able to take our laptops home? Yes, you take your, you will bring and take your laptop with you every day. And we have laptop sleeves that are available for you in the building, um, bags and all those sorts of things. I have a question. Sure. So, so if, if your child, child does, does it, how, do you, how, do you, how do you know what classes that they're, they're going to have in the building or all of them line? Say that. It bro you broke up a little bit. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. So are all classes still online? No. So, so we're still offering the same class schedule. Um, mm -hmm. The It's just the benefit of and they'll basically be running the same way. The only difference is if you're a child that's face to face, you actually be in a classroom with the actual teacher there. And so, you know, they'll probably, you know, some I think one of the issues with some kids with being at home um, is it, it just feels different. You know, some people need the actual environment to get motivated to work, in, you know, um, so they'll actually be in the classroom. The teacher will be there. They'll be able to ask those questions, um, engage in discussions. I mean, the same way that they can do now, but they'll just be in the school building and we'll be running classes the same way. Yeah, I'm listening to you and it sounds encouraging. I think it's the best thing for my child. But mm -hmm. what kind of scares me is that, and you know, you know, I am, I'm a jump mother. Yeah. 
main thing is I'm concerned about behavior. Right. I don't want anything to become a problem. No, I understand that. And so, you know, like I said, we're going to, um, I'm going to have um, a, a phase in grade level meeting, introduction, whatever you want to call it, when the kids come back. Um, I'm very confident that, you know, we all understand the seriousness of this. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I mean, I think you understand what I'm saying. It's not even about mm -hmm. a focus on jumping on behavior. No, it's no, no, about no. people being safe. But I, I, you, I so every, I think I think Kendall I, will be fine. I definitely, I definitely understand what you're saying. I work every day and I know I work mm -hmm. at Vanderbilt and we that's our main focus is to keep the kids safe. You know, yeah. that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, definitely so, understand. Yeah. So, you know, I think between conversations that I know you all have with him at mm -hmm. home and, you know, how we present things. And just, I think just the overall structure of it, um, I think will lend itself to kids really understanding that this is something that we all need to take serious because it's, it's, it's beyond, it's, it's, it's moved past just, well, you know, I'm silly. I'm you know, kind of, no, it's, it's, it's really not about that right now. It's about safe. And I think all of us having experienced COVID in one form or fashion for the past 12 months really understand the idea of safe and not safe and healthy and unhealthy and how that feels and how that has impacted all of us. So I think even kids have just that heightened sense of awareness when it comes to that now. So um, I think they'll be fine. I just want to, I need to just drive that point on the front end that, you know, this is going to be a safe space for everybody because that's the only way we'll be able to feel comfortable. Right. You know, it's, it's that we're consistent no, with the I appreciate the presentation. I think it, you did an awesome job and you hit it at all points. You know, I think you did an awesome job. That's the main thing. You have to have a uh, a plan going into it and it has to be precise. So, I mean, I think y'all are, you know, going to do a great job. So. Yeah, well, thank you. We, we're trying our best. We, we want kids to be back in the building. I'm looking forward to the day where everybody can be back in every school building. Um, so I think that's what's best for kids. Yes, sir. Um, you know, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. Even if we got to baby step it, you know, we'll get there. Yes, sir. Um, thank you for being on tonight. All right. Thank uh, you for uh, having it. I have another question for school uniforms is the expectation that pants are chinos, so no leggings or anything similar to that. Yeah, um, chinos, khaki, what, you know, however way you want to call that. Um, just no jeans. Um Girls, I know girls want to wear leggings. You can wear leggings under a skirt, but you can't wear leggings just by themselves. If I uh, have another question, if the kid has a sick day or if it is a snow day and they have a face to face school, do they get on the computer even though that happens, even if that happens? Um, well, hopefully with us being February kind of wrapping up. Hopefully we won't have any any more snow day opportunities. Um, I think we've had enough time out of school, <laughs> had enough reasons to not be in school. So hopefully we won't have to go down the road of a snow day. Uh, but if that is the case, I mean, we're just, we are gonna follow the common sense approach to that. Um, um, some of that guidance I'm sure will probably come from district offices as far as what the definition of a snow day is. I don't think that's necessarily going to be an east middle decision. You know, I think everyone, just for the purpose of consistency and fairness, everyone in the district will be following the definition of a snow day going forward. Um, so keep an ear out for that. If you are not feeling well and you're sick, I mean, depending on the degree of it, um, what's going on with you as an individual, personally, as a child. I mean, I don't want to just come right out and say this is what will happen because there can be gray areas to that. So, you know, we just have to we have to take that on a case by case basis. If you're a child who may have come in contact with someone. So just because of the purposes of proximity, you have to be quarantined at home, even though you don't have COVID yourself. Of course, you log in and, you know, keep up with your classes and your work. If you happen to be an individual who falls ill, even if it has nothing to do with COVID, you're just not well enough to log into a computer. We understand that as well. That's a sick day. We follow the same procedure that we would have even before this. We, you get, make us, you notify us at the school. Um, we make those 
accommodations for you when it comes to school work and when you're able to return. If there's a doctor's note that's necessary to be involved, you get that notification over to us, whether it be through email or if you're coming in the building and probably over email would be better if you can. And we'll just move forward from there. Great question so far, by the way. Thank you all. I think the main thing that I really want to communicate and I'll give um, some wait time in case anyone thinks of something is just that, you know, we we do have a plan in place. Um, please be patient with us um, as we, of course, this is the first time we've ever opened our doors in the middle of a pandemic during a blended learning phase in in the month of February, right? So we have a we feel very confident in our plan um there will more than likely be changes and adjustments going forward as we refine and we learn more about this process um one of the buzzwords that we have in education we rely on the idea of best practices so when it comes to whether it be lesson planning or anything like that, we always say best practices. And best practices really means based upon what we've done for years in the past, we can confidently say that if we do this today and going forward, that's the best course of action to take. Unfortunately, there are no best practices in place for how to open school in a pandemic. So we are putting things in place right now um, that we are confident in, but there will be adjustments. There will be a few bumps in the road. Um, those bumps in the road will come with us realizing mm, that approach may not be as safe as we possibly could be. Make it. Let's make an adjustment. So just be patient with us during that process, um, and I think we'll all be fine. Question popped up in the chat: Do we only have to bring the laptop? Yeah, I mean you can bring so. One of the, ben I mean, just like at home, you have your laptop. I hope students also are sitting there at their workstations at home with something to write with, something to write on, maybe take some notes or whatever. So yes, I encourage you to bring, you know, a notepad, you, just your regular thing, a binder with different things in it. Um, just all those essential tools that you would use to be a, a productive and effective student. Just there's the understanding that we're not doing I got a pencil. Oh, you need a pencil? How oh, I got an extra one. We're not sharing supplies. So you can bring things for yourself to be successful, but we're not sharing supplies. We don't, we're not even using the lockers at this point. So we're not that idea of, okay, put my laptop in your bag. I'll get it back from you later on today. We're not doing that. Everybody needs to keep up with their own items. Can kids bring toys to school for recess? Um I mean, yeah, I guess you can. Yeah, I mean, of course, you would have to have that in a place where it's not a distraction in the classroom. So you can't sit your thing on your desk there. Um, but, you know, if you got your, if, you, if this is your comfort, if this is your SEL comfort, then yes, absolutely. Um, but be mindful, I, I can't go on, on um, Toy Patrol if it comes up missing. So bring it at your own risk. Um, we are ordering earbuds for every student in the building. Um, they are not Beats by Dre Buds. They are not AirPods. Um, so if that's what you know you need, then I would encourage you to bring your own. But we are, we have placed an order so every kid will have a set of um, decent earbuds to use that they will be able to, that will be exclusively theirs. So, um, and we are developing a system to make sure that those buds keep in good condition 
and don't end up in that big ball of earbuds in the corner of the room. So there will be buds available for students. Or I encourage you to also bring your own. Um, any other questions? So will the kids keep those earbuds that you'll be giving them? Yeah, they're their buds. So the only thing that we still haven't figured this part out, we've had the conversation. We purchased earbuds before and not just here. I mean, schools, many schools that I've worked at, we've done things like headphones and all that. And we have kids turn them in. Of course, this was before COVID. And what ends up happening with those things is they don't get taken care of that well and they end up being damaged, destroyed, lost, whatever the case may be. So we're trying to decide and that will really depend on the maturity level of our students and how well they take care of them. They will be their buds. The kids will follow the same schedule every day. Um, so we're trying to see what would be best if we actually have the kids keep those earbuds in their pocket every day and bring them back and forth. Or if they just need to put them in a little baggie, like wipe them down at the end of the day or the session, put them in a little baggie and put them in a like a little cubby in the room and then get them the next day. But they, yeah, each kid will have, we, each, we're, we can provide each kid with their own set of earbuds. Uh, have another question in the chat box. Uh, my daughter hasn't had an ELA teacher for this quarter. So my question is, will a teacher be available for class? Yes, I actually just had a conversation um, today with central office and it's looking like, yes, we will have a ELA teacher very soon, like very soon. So yes, I'm confident in saying that. Thank you for that question. Absolutely. I did come in here a little late, but I'm trying to see if I, what did I miss? You missed everything. We were actually talking about you right before you logged <laughs> in. So everybody stay quiet. Um, <laughs> no, so um, um, this meeting is being recorded. So if you think of something later on or whatever, like, dang, I don't know. Um, this meeting is being recorded. It's going to be posted on our school website, eastnashvillemagnetmiddleschool.com. So you can check it out there if you have questions that are not answered in the presentation that was earlier or the question and answer period, please feel free to reach out. You can give me a call, um, email us, whatever the case may be. Any other questions, concerns? worries, celebrations. Okay, okay so, so on, the on the asynchronous, asynchronous days, days. Mm -hmm. that normally the kids, the kids have it where teachers put, put up work, work or either work giving them opportunity to, to finish the work from the day before. Mm -hmm. So how are those days going to work with in school? So that that really is one of the really beautiful things about those days is we're still going to treat those days in school. Um, well, they're going to run the schedule, but we're going to we're going to have a heavy emphasis on enrichment and intervention and providing support and help to kids on those days. OK, so we don't want to leave kids behind who are not coming to the face to face building. Um, meaning having them two days of instruction behind everyone else who's in the building, that would be unfair to them, right? Um, but we definitely want to capitalize on the opportunity on the day, on those two days for kids that are in the building to continue to have the opportunity of being able to work with their collection of teachers to kind of address 
some of those academic concerns that they may have and bridge some of those gaps that seem to probably have widened since March because we haven't been in the face to face space. So we'll really be working with kids on those two days to like really have a strong intervention plan in place academically to really catch up and um, get them really back in that academic mindset. I think that's really one of the most exciting parts about kids coming back to the building right now is that we will have that opportunity to really work with them. Okay, another question. Sure. So you have kids in school, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, kids are in the school building. Kids are kids who are signed up face to face come face Monday through face. Friday. They come Monday, Monday through okay, Friday. Okay, they they come every day, Monday yes, through Friday. But live session is Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday still, correct? Yeah, for kids who are still remaining virtual, live session is Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So if I'm a teacher and I have 10 to 15 students in my classroom, they have computers in front of them. I have a computer in front of me. How do I teach the kids virtual and in school? So it'll be kind of so as virtual teaching has gone on, one of the things that we've really tried to push and as our teachers and all of us really have learned this process is um, and if you look at the journey, we all kind of started with like using the Florida virtual exclusively to teachers now starting to find their own their own voice and their teaching method and all of that. So at this point in the majority of our classes, teachers are really providing that high quality direct instruction. It just so happens to be through a virtual lens, right? Just they're on the camera doing it. Um, but they're asking students questions. Students are asking them questions. Um, they're putting questions in the chat box. Teachers are going through PowerPoint lessons. They're actually giving examples. They're calling on students to provide responses to examples, working with students and all of that kind of thing. So it's really kind of like just a transition. We just have kids now coming, actually sitting in a room with them. Um, we at East have the have the benefit of being very rich in technology. So every classroom has its own smart board um, that teachers can link into and make sure that our kids who are at home really still get as close to the quality of that face-to-face -face experience that they can even being in that virtual setting. So kids at home, when they're logged into the class, they will still be able to ask questions. Teachers will still be able to respond to them in real time. It will work seamlessly. It's just we have some kids sitting in a room, some kids sitting at home, but it'll it will operate. They'll they'll still have that same availability. So what you're saying is one teacher will be able to teach homeschool and in school at the yes, same time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if the child inside the classroom needs a question. How do they how do they contact the teacher? What do they have to do? Uh, send them a message. If they're in the classroom, they just raise their hand. They can talk in the classroom. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure this out because I might be asking some somebody might not want to ask. They just no, you're fine. Sit. No, please ask away. Absolutely. OK. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. I got you. Okay, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Will the kids, so would they have to stay in the classroom all day long? Or do they change classes? 
Yeah, so we'll, we're still going to be offering related arts, so they'll transition from that. They'll still have recess, so we'll transition for that. Um, they'll still have lunch, so we'll transition for that. So they'll have about two or three transitions throughout the day. So the lunch, will they eat in the classroom or the cafeteria? They'll be eating in the cafeteria. So when they come into the cafeteria, they'll have a seat in an assigned seat, and the cafeteria workers will be preparing lunch and putting it like in boxes, like the little to-go box things, and we will bring the lunch around to them. Oh, okay, so they won't get up and go get that lunch. You got to bring it to them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I do understand. Oh, well, I do have yeah, go ahead, question. Go ahead. Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Okay, so what if they're related artists PE when they return to school? Mm -hmm. Are they dressing now or what are they doing? So we are, I was actually in conversation with our PE instructor. Um, we're not going to be doing the dress out thing because of course that would involve them, locker room and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So we're putting together a series of activity that are more so focused on movement and giving them just that kind of break from being sitting around as opposed to you know those really intense pe activities that they were doing last year that involved them doing a bunch of heavy running jumping sweating and all of that kind of stuff okay I have a question. I may have missed it. Did you say they could not wear hoodies or can they wear hoodies? Yeah, you can do a hoodie. I mean, I know kids love to wear a hoodie as a coat nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, so we still have to have the idea of safety, though. So, I mean, I mean, let's just let's let's talk. I want to we're going to talk about the common sense approach to something like a hoodie. Right. You know, we're not. OK. We're, you, you follow what I'm saying? So if we're in the classroom and you just so happen to be, if it's a little chilly that day and, and you are saying, having a reasonable thing of Mr. and Miss so-and-so, my head is really cold. Can I pull my hood up a little bit just to kind of warm up? That's that's a common sense. Absolutely. No one's getting into a power struggle over that. If we're talking about I'm walking down the hallway and I am putting my hood on because I don't want to follow a rule or something like that, that's a problem. I mean, you know, so okay. we're going to, you, you know what I mean? I want to make sure kids are comfortable mm -hmm. and also safe, but we're not going to play games with stuff like that. And we and we kind of can kind of tell the difference between the two. And I think the mm -hmm. kids will, too. OK, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I know it's a lot to digest. I know we're excited about our kids coming back. I'm excited to see them. I'm really ready to see the fifth graders uh, next week and then, you know, everyone else following that. Um, so it can be a lot on your mind um, between now and then. Um, we've been on for about an hour. Um, I want you to really take some time and think. Um, if you have some questions, whatever time of day they may come to you, write them down so you don't forget them. Email them. You can call me. I think a lot of y'all have my number already as we've been on this journey for quite some time. Um, but, you know, just reach out, you know, reach out to any of us on the leadership team, Mr. Woodall, Ms. Autry, Ms. Kesey, Ms. Edgens. Uh, just reach out to us if you have any questions. We're always trying to be available to answer. Um, you know, just, you know, come on, hit us with it. There is no such thing as a stupid question or a silly question asking too many questions, ask everything that you can think of, because that may push our thinking as our plan unfolds and develops going forward to say like an aha moment of, you know, we didn't think about that. So let's think about it and put something in place. So if you have a question about something, you asking would really help us out because we've never done this before. So um, 
With that being said, if there is nothing immediate, I think we'll wrap up for the night. This recording will be on the website, so you can check it out. Um, thank you all for your time tonight. I, I, I look forward to seeing everyone soon. Um, it's exciting. We're going to be excited and happy, but we're going to be safe. So that's the two things. We're going to be excited and we're going to be safe. Um, and, and that's what we're going to do at East this year. So thank Mr. you all. Jackson. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, one other question. Yeah. Drop off. What? How early can the kids get drop off? Is it they have to be in school at eight, right? Yeah. Are you yep. getting? Are they letting in the building at seven thirty like normal? How now the doors. Doing? The doors are going to open up at seven forty-five. Okay, so will breakfast be served? Yeah, breakfast is served from seven forty-five to eight. Okay, and another question, and and I'll let y'all go. Uh, should kids bring down sanitizer wipes? So when they start school on the 18th, mm -hmm. are the desks going to be sanitized? Your kids come in ready to wipe their own desks off where they're sitting at? Should they wipe when they go to the restroom? Are those yeah, so we, we have, yeah, we have sanitizing wipes, disinfectants, um, hand sanitizer to probably last the next two years and give everybody a gallon to go home with. Um, so the idea of sanitizing is at on the top of the priority list. Things will be wiped down, cleaned up. We're going to have time between transitions from room to room for kids to wipe their areas down before new kids come in. When kids come in, we will also have them wipe the area down before they actually sit down. So yeah, sanitation so, will be taken care of. Okay, so once each student arrive in the classroom, they should be cleaning the table. Did somebody else sit at or should they clean it when they leave out? That's where that's Both. the way it's clean before. Both. Okay. Okay. Both. Okay. Yep. The person leave it should wipe it down because you use it. And before you use it, you should wipe it down because you're using it. So will sanitizer be in the class offered to the kids or will Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, so actually you'll have wipes in each classroom. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm you know I'm gonna come up and see if and you better let me in the building see if in the second. I can't let you in the building. I can't <laughs> that was in the first I, that was in the first part of the presentation. <laughs> and we can't let adults in the building just yet. But I will okay. take as many pictures and send them to you as you would like, or or do a video tour with you. But we can't let adults in the building just yet. Okay. Okay, well I think that might be all. Okay. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you for being on. All right, gang. I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you all for being here. Like I said, the recording will be online. Um, Look forward to seeing y'all. Y'all be safe. Take care of each other, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.